Hello and welcome. Thank you for joining this webinar to learn more about the recently launched Microsoft Project Plan 1, which when used by itself is geared towards accidental project managers. So they are the individuals that have somehow ended up managing projects when all they wanted to be was perhaps a marketing manager, product manager, or maybe even an astronaut. So if you're someone who needs to define a set of tasks, assign deadlines, and people to get the work done, and you're currently using a solution like Excel, then Project for the Web is definitely for you. And just before we get into it, feel free to post questions during this session using the Q&A panel, and I'll look at them at the end. So the agenda for today, I'll start with a quick introduction to Wellington before looking at Microsoft Project Plan 1, otherwise known as Project for the Web. And as part of this session today, I will be providing a live demo after which I'll outline next steps and share my contact details. And of course, I'll respond to any questions that have been asked during the webinar. Firstly, a little bit about Wellington. So we started back in 2001 as a pure project management consulting firm based in Windsor. We now in the present day have offices in the UK, Ireland and Spain. And we offer a wide variety of services that span consultancy, training and technology with a real focus on project and work management. We've managed to collect a few badges along the way as well, as you can probably see. And we're recognized today as a specialist marks of gold PPM partner, an APM accredited training provider, a P3M3 accredited consulting organization and as an approved G Cloud supplier, which will be of interest to organizations that are maybe from the public sector. We do also run and compile the annual state of project management report with a latest edition now available on our website. So please go and check that out. And lastly, we also deliver the annual future PMO conference, which just for this year, due to the current COVID-19 situation, is moving online and it's going to be completely free to attend. Further details are available at wellington.co.uk and at futurepmo.com. The address is obviously being displayed on the screen. Lastly, we've also worked with quite a diverse mix of clients. The one thing they all have in common is that they all run projects. You can view quite a few case studies on our website, by the way. So again, do follow that link that's displayed at the bottom and go and check those out. So let's now take a very quick look at why Microsoft decided to launch the new project before we move on to the live demo. Well, over the last few years, the uh, Microsoft product and engineering team have been conducting quite a bit of research. They've been speaking with partners such as ourselves. They've been speaking with customers, including several of uh, Wellington's. And they did this really to get a better understanding of the big picture. And what they found is that we all manage projects. And depending on which department you're in, it might be called a project, a campaign, or a product launch, or something else. But fundamentally, they are projects. But not everyone is a trained project manager. Not everyone has Prince 2 uh, practitioner status, charter status, or a PMP. Often the person that they uh, found leading a project happens to be a subject matter expert. So somebody that's been assigned a project and just told to get on with it without really having any formal training or appreciation of what project management is. We also found that we want to manage our work in our own unique ways, which could be in the traditional approach by creating a waterfall plan, or it could be agile or something in between. And they found that the traditional tools that many people use just don't allow that level of flexibility. Collaboration, it's something that's also critical for the success of any project, but it tends to be chaotic, it's disorganized, and collaboration for many people could simply be a quick chat in the corridor or emails from bouncing back and forth. It's very difficult to keep it very nicely structured. And it's because of these challenges that teams often go out and grab the first solution that they see, but addresses their own short term needs. But with everyone using their preferred solutions, they start to generate a lot of data and we want to make sense of it. But it's scattered everywhere. It's a mess. And reporting is a manual time consuming process and something that PMOs really struggle with. We need better visibility in order to make decisions. But in a manual world where you've got to stitch all of the data together, no one really has the big picture. So with this in mind, Microsoft have reinvented project and simplified it as well. 
The new project for the web is built as a native app on the Power Platform, and despite being simplified, does still have the same scheduling engine as featured on Microsoft Project. Project is also now part of the same platform as Dynamics 365, so beyond what I'm going to demonstrate today, it can be extended with options around adding RAID logs, governance workflows, and a lot more, and that is something that I'll be demonstrating in the next webinar. Microsoft's vision really is to enable teams to work the way in which they want and for organizations to still get the results that they need. So this does now bring me on to the demo where you're going to see Microsoft Project Plan 1 in action. However, just before I go into the demo, a very quick caveat, that this will be a high level overview of Project for the Web, um, but I will show you some of the standard reports available within Power BI and demonstrate how you can also access Project for the Web data via Teams to work better and to collaborate more efficiently. So with that in mind, I'm going to now jump over to my demo environment. So bear with me, let me just get that on the screen. And here we are. This you might recognize as being the homepage to Office 365. That's exactly what this is. It's obviously featuring our own branding, but uh, we of course are interested in Project for the Web. So I'm going to click on Project. In fact, I don't need to do that because I've already got the tab open, as you can see there. And when you go into the project icon and the project homepage, this is what most users are typically going to be faced with. It's a list of all the projects that they are managing, either through Project for the Web, or it could be projects that are being managed in Project Online. And you can see the differentiation here. It's either Project for the Web or it's Project Online, which is represented by PWA Project, that's Project Web App. Uh, we can also go in and access things like roadmaps, which again, I'm not going to, to show today, but that is another feature that's also available. Along the top, I can also see some of my favorite projects being pinned to the top. But again, the focus today is on project plan one. So I'm going to go in and create a brand new project and just demonstrate how simple it is to do this. And I've mentioned this before, that often when people are faced with Microsoft project on the desktop, they can become slightly dazed and confused. There's lots of options. It's like looking at the cockpit of a Boeing 747 with so many controls available. And the difference here with Project for the Web is that it's super easy to start using without any real training. So here I am in my project. It's a very simple interface. I'm going to go in and start adding in some new tasks. So let's call this campaign setup. Uh, we'll click down and start adding in some tasks. So task one two, uh, three, and we'll leave this at four. And my OCD is going to uh, take control, so I better go back and change that to a capital. Uh, okay, I'm going to select my tasks now, make these subtasks. And as I do this, we've actually started creating our project. It's this easy. I can now also go in and start assigning work to individuals. Now, as it stands, when I start typing in the name of an individual, it's simply looking at the Office 365 user profiles and allowing me to tag people against these tasks. What it's not doing currently is sending notifications to these people to say that they've been assigned a task. However, that is a feature that's coming from Microsoft in the near future. Um, so I'm going to assign this task now to Megan. As soon as I do this, you will see that we get this pop up. It's asking me to connect my project to a group. So this is to an Office 365 security group. And if you're already using Microsoft Teams, then this might be something that you're familiar with, because when you create a team within that, you can create channels and you can also determine who is a member of that team. So that's what this links into. So I can either create a brand new group, which I'm not going to do. I'm going to go in and add this project to an existing group that we've already established. So I'll scroll down, select this project for the web group here, click add and assign. And as soon as I do that, you'll see that the group members has now jumped up to five and I can all of a sudden see all of the other individuals that are members of that group. So when I go in to assign somebody now, I can select from this list, which is exactly what I'll do. Let's also assign something to Lydia, there we go. Currently on the screen, I'm seeing assigned to duration as being the default columns as well as name. I've got the ability to go in and add additional columns. So currently you can select from the columns that are currently displayed. However, in a uh, update that's coming before the end of the year, we think uh, you will also be able to add in custom columns, which is quite nice. But for now, I'm going to drop in effort. We'll also drop in effort completed, effort remaining. And let's round this off by adding in depends on. 
as well. So here I can start typing in some effort estimates. So for this particular task, we'll say it's going to be five days. Uh, for the next one, we'll say it's going to be three days. And uh, let's just put some other uh, durations here. So we'll say seven days. And for this one, we'll say 10 days. So this is one of the views that I've got access to. It's the grid view. And one of the things that I've not done is actually give this project the title. So I will do that now simply by clicking on the title there. Getting rid of these pop-ups. And now I can start typing in the name of this particular project. So we'll call this the webinar demo. I'm going to leave all of the other details as a default and close out of this. That project has now been saved. Aside from this view that I'm looking at currently, I can also cycle through some of the other views that are available out of the box. And one of these views is the board view. And for those of you that are maybe using Microsoft Planner or have looked at Microsoft Planner historically, this is pretty much the same visualization that you get in Microsoft Planner. Here, I've got the option of going in, adding in my custom buckets, or I can go in and select from some predefined views, one of which is progress, and I can also group by finish date. Let's first of all um, go into the progress view, actually, which gives us these additional default buckets of in progress and completed. And now to update the status of a task, all I do is click and drag into the relevant bucket. And as I've dragged this into the in progress column or bucket, um, you can see that it's been updated now to 50% complete. If I click and drag now to complete it, you can see that it's now marked as being 100% complete. And if I go back to the grid view, you will see that this is all interlinked. So here I can see that the effort has also been captured. Going back to the board, I'm going to move that back to the beginning and I'm going to go to what is my favorite view, I have to say, which is the timeline. So here I can see a breakdown of the individual tasks that we've already assigned. I can start creating some dependencies here. If I want to add a bit of additional time against a task, all I do is click and drag that out and I can extend that task out. And I can do that again for the others as well. And again, I've got the ability to go in and create those very simple dependencies, which is quite nice, but you'll see that it's very visual. And if in this example, I want to mark something as being completed, all I do is tick that box and straight away, you can see the bar gets colored in, but I also hear a very satisfying ping in my ear, which you guys probably won't as part of this demo. But going back to this now, you can also go into the tasks and get additional information by clicking on open details. And here we can see the start date, the finish date, the duration. I can also see which bucket it sits within. So we've not set up any buckets uh, specifically for this, but you can see some additional information linking to effort and also dependencies as well. So this in a nutshell is Microsoft Project Plan 1 in its basic guise. You can, of course, extend it using Microsoft Power Apps, which I talked about earlier. Uh, but what I'm going to do is step away from Project for the Web now and jump into Teams. And again, I know that many of you are probably using Teams already for collaboration within your organizations. And within Teams, you can obviously go in and create Teams. Within these teams, you can also create different channels. And within the channels, you can have specific tabs being displayed that might be displaying certain applications or certain URLs and web pages for people to be able to go in and collaborate on. Uh, what we've got here is the project for the web group that I added my existing plan to. So if I go into that now and go into the general tab, you will see that we've got all of these uh, windows available. So we've got a general post window where we can have ongoing conversations around the project. I could also have a centrally shared file store, which is quite handy. But importantly, I'll let this load up really quickly. Uh, we've also got the ability to go in and view the plan. This is not the plan that I was working on just before. This is one that I made earlier in true Blue Peter fashion. But what I can do is go into that project plan and access the same views that I was when I was working directly within Project for the Web. So here I have my grid view. I've also got the board view. And I, of course, have the timeline view as well. And I can edit this, so this is fully editable. And if I want to, I can also make this full screen. Uh, I'll shorten that back down. And the final element that I wanted to show you was Power BI. So as a default, Microsoft do provide a content reporting pack within Power BI that's linked to Project for the Web. It consists of nine different reports, and that's what's currently loading up on the screen. And that's what you see there. So I can extend this out. 
And what I'll do is I'll cycle through some of these reports. So this one here is the portfolio dashboard that gives you a general overview of all of the projects that we have captured within project for the web plan one. We, of course, also have some filters there along the top. And you can see the linked KPIs being displayed there on the left hand side and some charts being displayed there in the middle. And you can also see very clearly which, uh, which tasks are overdue, which is quite handy. And aside from this, we also have the portfolio timeline view which shows as a visualization of the um, individual projects and the timelines beneath which or between which they fall. And we can also see the percentage complete being displayed as well. We can also access portfolio milestones. There is also a very basic resource dashboard which shows me how many resources we have assigned by project. Uh, we can also see effort completed and remaining by individual resource. And we can also see which projects are taking up the most amount of resource. And again, you have some linked KPIs being displayed there down the left hand side. Uh, you can also see resource assignments, which is quite handy. And individuals can also go in and view their own individual workload. So if I click on my work, this is now a breakdown of how many projects I've been assigned against. This is the number of tasks that I've been assigned, which is quite a few. I've managed to complete 18. And again, lots of information being displayed that helps us out. Aside from this, I'm going to show you one other view and that is the task overview. So we see how many total number of tasks there are across the entire portfolio of its women at Project Plan 1. These again are the standard out of the box reports. When we have the ability to add custom columns, we'll be able to extend these reports. And of course, if you are using Project Plan 1 in conjunction with Microsoft Power Apps, which is something that I'll be demonstrating in the next webinar, you can produce much richer reports than what you're currently seeing. And for organizations out there that are maybe using Project for the Web or already using, I should say, Project Online, and you might have certain departments that want to start using Project for the Web because maybe they are less mature. We can also produce some combined reports that show you the entire portfolio, no matter where it's being managed, whether it's within Project for the Web or partially within Project Online you can get these combined views. And I won't go through this in detail uh, because this is going to be covered by a future webinar. But here I can see which system the projects reside in and which projects uh, are within that portfolio. I can also see a joined up portfolio timeline, no matter which system uh, the initiatives were initiated or are being managed in. And I can see collective milestones and resource assignments across both systems as well. So that concludes this very quick demo of Project Plan 1 in conjunction with Power BI and Microsoft Teams. And again, don't forget, I will be going through a more detailed demo of Project for the Web being used in conjunction with Power Apps in the next webinar. But for now, let's talk about our next steps. So if you would like to learn more, I can provide you with a tailored demo focused around your core objectives. So please do get in touch using the details that are coming up at the end. And I would be more than happy to arrange that session. If you would like to take a deeper dive, we can also deliver a envisioning workshop, which would be used to look at your current ways of working, to understand the pain points, and to show you the art of a possible. The output from those sessions are typically tailored implementation roadmaps alongside recommendations for next steps and a proposal to show you what the associated effort would be and the associated cost. Alternatively, if you'd like to get hands on, we can also deliver a formalized proof of concept so that you can start visualizing your data and processes within the Office 365 platform. Um, so these are my uh, contact details and that unfortunately is the end of this very short session. I'm sure you've got questions, so please don't hesitate to get in touch using the details currently displayed. If you want to connect on LinkedIn, you can either search for me or you can just scan the QR code via the LinkedIn app on your phone. Please do check out the Wellington website and do follow us on LinkedIn where we regularly announce new events and share product updates for being passed down by Microsoft. However, at this stage, I'm going to have a quick look at the Q&A panel to see if we have any questions. Thank you.